Hi, this is Antonina and this channel is all about sustainable fashion and if you want to say bye-bye to fast fashion, watch this channel. Today's topic is going to be about body positivity and body positivity is kind of controversial trend in fashion so let's have a look how brands have used that so far. How many times have you heard from fashion brands that this particular dress is going to look flattering on you? Flattering means to praise for someone's appearance and most of the time it's used for the word slimming. This means that fashion industry wants us to look slimmer, but hey, what about all that body positivity trend? All of a sudden, they want us to be okay with our body shape and size after years of being exposed to insanely skinny sample size models. So there's the mixed types of branding messages in fashion. On one hand, they want us to, to look uh, skinny and they want the dress to be flattering. On the other hand, they, they shout out body positivity. So I decided to look closer on when fashion brands got it right and when wrong. So the term body positivity is all about body acceptance of every individual and it became a social movement, a very successful social movement that got a lot of followers and approvals through the, uh, among the consumers. So if the culture is shifting towards body positivity, why not inject it into fashion campaigns? As a result, the plus size models appeared and it became a new cool thing on the runways. After that, a diversity and inclusion trend followed. It became popular to put the models with the diverse you know, skin types, uh, indigenous models uh, with different age groups as well, uh, genderless, queer, non-binary uh, models with disabilities, you name it. So this trend reached its peak in 2018 at the New York uh, fashion show where 30% of the models were inclusive type of models. So body positivity in fashion, unlike in social movement, has its limitations. So let's have a look at them. What's common between all plus size models? They all are between size 14 and 16 and um, they have the hourglass body shape. No cellulite, high cheekbones, perfect skin and it was even a scandal when some brands used their standard size model using that fake pads underneath clothes. So imagine that you have that skinny neck and arms and then large plus size um, hourglass shape body which is of course unrealistic to achieve in real life so this is completely unrelatable to real plus size women who, who are buying these clothes. So what does this mean? It means that if you are not size 0 or 1, the flattering sample size, and you're not size 14 or 16, the plus size, then you're kind of in between. What else happened with plus size? Um, some brands now include plus size on their websites, but they put it in a separate category. On the top right corner, you see that there is written separate category plus size. And you go there and you see that the stock is much more limited and there are few items for specifically plus sizers. So imagine, and, and stock is different. So imagine that you would go to the offline boutique shop and you know, there's a beautiful shop and you check around and then you cannot find your size and the shop assistant is saying to you, by the way, your size is, is there in that um, uh, back door very far corner of the shop please do not walk here there's nothing for you just go directly there it's embarrassing so by trying to be inclusive some brands exclude the uh, uh, this category of women even further it was interesting to observe at uh, the Spanish label Desigual who or Desigual who one of the first on the market claimed we don't dress bodies we dress people and since then, since Desigual's, uh, when Desigual label appeared like five years ago, this movement started. We have now super famous uh, diversity inclusion models that became famous that days. I want to name who is the role model for me. 
This is not a plus size model. This is a little person model. Sinead Burke is an Irish school teacher, was an Irish school teacher. And Sinead managed to, on her example, educate the luxury fashion market that also little person sizes matter in fashion, not just plus sizes and that this niche has to be included as well. I will leave her story about her below so you can read in more details. There was a big scandal about Victoria's Secret uh, narrow notion of beauty where their careful selection of models of the specific shape and size and type um, excluded a lot of customers. Who... How American Eagle got it right. American Eagle went deeper with the representation of diversity than other mainstream brands. As you scroll through the brand's bra selection, you can come across women with different uh, disabilities, women on the crutches, even the women with insulin pump. But Irie doesn't specifically call attention to them. So the vibe about that American Eagle injury is about female solidarity rather than appealing to the male's gaze. So Victoria's Secret, all about male gaze. Uh, American Eagle, all about women's solidarity and empowerment. Different vibes, completely different strategy. One worked, <laughs> you know what happened to Victoria's Secret now. Another brand who got body positivity right was Organic Basics. Uh, not only they are sustainable as um, a fabrics they use, but also they are ethical towards the body image that they pr uh, promote. If we look at the luxury segment, Rihanna uh, made a, a big statement over there as she invited a very pregnant woman to her Fenty fashion show to again celebrate uh, women's solidarity, women empowerment and celebrate different stages of women's life, not just binky youth. I want to say that I do support brands that are inclusive and that this is part of their ethical code of, code of conduct. And I want my daughter to grow up and not to question herself or to question whether all women are beautiful because it will be obvious 